Oh, it's like, it already, like it's in her contract. Yeah, she's got to have it in there. Oh, damn. Okay, now you guys should really hear. I can see, I can see the lines bouncing. Can you hear us? Hello. Can you hear us? Hello. Yes. Yes. Okay. Technology. Well, I'll do my uh, my drone racing. This is our monitor. All right. Look at that. Amazing. This is what we can see. Hey. hey. Awesome. Sure. Great. So you guys are all good. I'll come sit. I, the, the names are all. Uh, you're here. You're here. Am I here? Yeah. Here we go. Perfect. Yeah. Yay. Sweet. Hi everyone. I'm gonna have to get up to read the questions because I can't possibly. And it's a good thing that we've got this angular uh, perspective because Keith looks really nice. even more gigantic and Sherry looks like a miniature. Person. Wait, Perfect. even more I love it. than I already am. You're tall. I don't, oh, I don't, okay. yeah, I don't mean. Jeez. <laughs> We're in like the Gandalf. Uh, I would never say that to your face. <laughs> <laughs> Not to my face. <laughs> the opposite, and I have to sit back here because I'm so tall. Well, that's, that's true. That's just true. That's true. Yeah. It's like a funhouse mirror. Somebody <laughs> already shouted, "I love you, Sherry." I can't oh, see who it is. I love you. So thanks uh, for coming, everybody. We're here to, I guess, sort of celebrate judgment and hang out with you all and answer some Woo! questions. And uh, I thought we'd kind of like start by introducing ourselves. Keith, you're you're on my right, and I was looking at you when I said that. So that was like a like a hint to like so that's kind of hey. It. So yeah, go for it. Uh, I'm Keith Aram. We're here at PCB Productions, and um, I had the honor to work with this uh, amazing group of people to uh, produce a pretty amazing game. So. Uh, we uh, spent a good part of a year on this, and uh, it's coming out pretty good, so we're pretty happy about that. So thank you guys for supporting us. I'm Joe Zija. I'm the voice of... I've got to remember not to look at the computer. I'm looking at the camera. Uh, <laughs> I'm the voice of Pacino in the game, who is like a total dork, and I love him a lot. Uh, Judgment was my first Yakuza experience, although I had played... Uh, actually, no, you guys keep doing this. Every time I play a game, you hire me for it. I was in the middle of playing Yakuza Zero, Ooh. and I got we did that. Yeah, that's the third time you've done it to me. That's in a really studio. little good. It's super bizarre. Wouldn't it be great if that actually worked? I was gonna that say that's really, the rule. I got a lot that's, of games to play. That's yeah. really great. Yeah, it happened with Trails of Cold Steel. I was playing Trails of Cold Steel, mm -hmm. and yeah, you like, sent me an email, yeah. and I was like, "How? I'm playing the game," and it was a PC port. But uh, yeah. trying to make sure you know the subject material when we call you. So yeah, cool. Uh, what else have I done? I was Rowan in Shadowverse. I was Fox McCloud in Star Fox Zero: The Battle Begins, and I've done a bunch of other stuff. I write books, science fiction and fantasy, and uh, you write books. I do write books. I didn't know that. That's I write books. Cool. Would you like one? I have one. I'll, I'll, I'll give them. I'll give. I have them in my truck. I'll give them to y'all. What? Awesome. Mm -hmm. Very cool. If you um, buy one, Joe will flip. Oh, that's true. I do have a thing. If you if you buy one of my books and you send me a uh, like a snapshot of the order thing, I'll do like a flip and then call you out on Twitter. It's uh, just because I do parkour. So, yeah. like, so yeah, like, like a flip, really flip, cool. like a like a like an actual like, like I'll do an actual flip. flip. I'll take requests. Not like you're like oh you're gonna do a J step. No, not I will not flip people on. Right, okay. Oh, so you could flip. do you could do your own stunts as well. Yeah, I have I've done stunts for for video games that I can't talk about yet. But yeah, it's been fun. That's cool. So now, the I, start of the show. Yay. Oh, please. I'm Greg Chun, voice of Yagami. Um, Woohoo! Woohoo! And uh, I um, I guess other things that I've done, Ike in Super Smash and Dr. Harold Winston in the uh, old cinematic world of, of Overwatch, Adam and Nier, Automata. Is it Automata or Automata? I heard, I heard it in the always. credits, in the credits, one of the bots pronounces it Automata. And the whole time, what? I was like, how do I pronounce this game? And then finally, at the, in the credits, like the end game, it was like, well, thank you for playing near Automat. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> that's nice. nuts. Um, and I've got I, the Somnium Files, coming out this, uh, this, this, this month. So that'll be fun. Um, I'm playing Dante in that. And I'm a music producer. I run an amazing. Group. He's really good. He's, he's amazing. Really nice good. House. That's my, my playing is quite hacky now. But I want to get back into it. Um, and I've uh, written for a lot of commercials and some TV, and now I'm kind of I work with Lonely Island from time to time, and I've been working on Netflix comedy specials, writing Very comedy cool. songs for comedians. Uh, and I just have to interject nice. a quick story about that. So Greg and I go out to uh, to dinner a few months back uh, after uh, uh, Judgment wraps, and we're going out to dinner at this really nice steakhouse. We're there, and they've got a, a guy who's playing piano at the back, and you know, as you do at one of these fancy kind of steak places and Greg gets got up to go to the bathroom and I'm sitting there and I, I, I had probably a couple more drinks than I should have and I'm just kind of sitting there just kind of spacing out and all of a sudden I'm hearing this like cool music and Greg's just not coming back to the table and I'm like there the music's going and, and I look over and it's Greg you did not. <laughs> And it's not. He is completely. I mean, uh, and everyone in the restaurant was like floored because it was. It wasn't yeah, just like kind of hacking at the piano. It's amazing to hear him play. And the pianist, the guy who was actually the hired guy, comes over and he goes, 
well, you know, uh, I'm <laughs> still people, taking the tips of yeah, the guitar. People always, you know, like to play, but I figured I'd kind of let you. And he was like completely, I mean, great. It was <laughs> That's amazing. Awesome. He is incredible. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I just had a little shout out for Greg because he, he's, he's very humble about it. But he's Now I can never play in public again. That's it. And then people are going to be like, Keith said he was good. You were telling me like two weeks yeah. ago, like, oh, I'd always like to learn Claire de Lune. It's going to take you like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, because my music reading sucks. Oh. Yeah. Kind well, of ear play. Just play good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll debut you later. It's, it's yeah, right. <laughs> intense. I want to learn how to play these instruments. I'll teach you. Okay. Yeah. Joe plays like 10. Do you at really? At varying levels of mediocrity. Yeah. Yes. I, I played piano when I was six mm. years old uh, at school, and then uh, we moved, and I couldn't finish and that was it. my piano education. Wow. Uh, yeah. no I was always a, there was no pianos yeah. anywhere but that town. Yeah. <laughs> no, just at that one, one school. It's terrible. Um, my name is Jeremy Lee. Um, I play Mafu in Judgment. Um, also because it's staring at me. Makoto in Persona 5. Oh, yeah. oh. Um, uh, oh, I'm yeah. Gage in Borderlands 2. Um, oh, I'm also in Near Automata. I'm A2. Um, I was in Horizon Zero Dawn. Point, right? Yeah, where is that sweet little girl? There she is. Well, well, yeah. yeah. Um, and I was no in uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, the DLC, and uh, the quartermaster in Call of Duty World War II. Even though my family says that's not me, um, because the character's hair is in a ponytail. It is me. I did motion capture. <laughs> it would take that. me a lot. My cousin that. was like, "That's not her. Her hair's in a ponytail." Thanks. Yeah. How old is, is your? He's cousin? thirteen, so he should understand. Oh, okay, because kids don't kids don't care. I was in a Lego show, and one of my friends was like. Yeah, I told my son that you were in, you were that the guy in the Lego show, and he was unimpressed. Yeah, and I was like, they don't my cousin also said she talks in a deeper voice than you, so it's not you. Wow. Okay. Wow. Well, it took me forever to realize that uh, Bert and Ernie were also Kermit and Fozzie. Oh yeah. And yeah. I was like, yeah. what? Wait, wait a second. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Hanson and Ernie? Yeah. Right? It's like, what? No, it's pretty yeah. mind-blowing. Yeah. You just you just associate the visuals with the voice differently, yeah. even though they're the identical voice. <laughs> it's sure. still them. None of us can do that. No, no. no. We all have, we have one voice. I have one <laughs> voice and one volume. And one volume. One That's volume. really. I don't even inflect most of the time. Yeah. I did have somebody tell me they were like, uh, "Oh, you played so and so in this cartoon. Do the voice or do the laugh." So I did the laugh. They're like, mm, "It's not you." It was louder in my. It was louder on my room. I was like, "I'm sorry." I. I didn't bring my equipment to mix myself live for you. I think the best part is when someone goes in for an audition where they're auditioning for a sound alike for themselves. Oh, and man. And I think that's the, the weirdest kind of crazy thing. Richard Epcar told me a story where they were looking for a retro, Richard Epcar type voice. He went in just despite the audition and he didn't get the part. That happened to me last week. I auditioned a voice match for myself on some, some random video and I, I didn't get it. Nah. What? Yeah. That's so strange. Well, you guys want to take a couple questions yes. before we like? Let's see what's, what's going All on right, in the chat. How do I get up now? So I'll, I'll I'll narrate from over here. Everyone gets a great shot of my crotch as I walk past. You have to use your <laughs> narrator voice. Let's see. Let's see what's going. I got Yas Queen. Let's see. Wow, there's a holy crap. There's a lot of chat going on. Um, all the chat. Does anybody notice what a lovely singing voice Jeremy has? She does not. Did she you does. hear her lovely vibrato? <laughs> I notice these things. I had to do a singing audition today. Ooh, it was sweet. terrifying because I had two four-hour game sessions yesterday. Oh, and sweet. I was like, oh, this is not going to go well for a 9 a.m. <laughs> singing audition. <laughs> After I'm like almost shredded from yesterday. Cher, I mean, does anybody call you Cher? Uh, I had somebody in high school call me Cher Bear. Once. Okay. Once. 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 They did now. not live to tell the <laughs> uh, No, nobody really calls me Cher. I had one director on a film call me Cher because he said Cher on me was, it took too long. Too bad. <laughs> yeah. What hey, Cher, he was really on a tight yeah, schedule. What a, what a <laughs> so. I just called you Cher just now. You did? Yeah. Wait, did you? Oh, I did. No. Okay. That's a new nickname. Is the video evidence? Uh, the only question says, Joe, how does it feel to be an international musical chairs champion? Which is a joke Ooh. because that's not really true. Okay. So Maureen took shots of me last week. Okay. And when we did we did a random parkour shot. We're like, it's actually a super cool shot where I'm going over a chair. Oh, and that I was, was cool. Like, I was like, capture this. And someone was like, international musical chairs champion. I was like, that's that fantastic. is badass. So I'm that assuming you're the one that made the, com the, the comment. I think we should just go with it. Sounds like a Will Ferrell movie, don't you think? 
when it's like competitive musical chairs we get super mad at each other. So, but actually, they can if you, use if them you as weapons. If you declare it <laughs> as such and put it on Wikipedia, no one will ask questions. No will I know this because Bryce Pappenbrook and I took a picture of Patrick Seitz wearing a little tiny sombrero, <laughs> and we made that his picture on Wikipedia. And then we said, uh, Patrick Seitz has the world's largest collection of sombreros. And then, and that's a thing. And then for weeks, he's like, who did this? And why is this a thing? <laughs> and uh, so we created a whole page. And it was we were going to do that for a bunch of people and create this like fake anime persona that would add things to people's Wikipedia pages. But we told too many people about it. Good. And then everyone knew. Fake news. Yeah, no. pretty much. Share me. Uh, Share. What do you share? Share, share bear. Share, share, bear. share, bear. share, bear. share, bear. share bear. What do you love most about my feet? Uh, well, honestly, I love that she uh, is is a fighter of fight fights for justice, and I love that she's a lawyer because I've always wanted to play a lawyer, but never have I been given the opportunity. So I love that she's like a badass, but then she's all rooting for Yagami, yeah. and she's like. Go, Yagami. But then she comes she's in and she's like, like, oh, I can handle this myself. And then she's going to yeah. ass, right? It's a nice blend. Yeah. You, she, she can do both. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it was very cool to get to, my dad will ask what I'm working on and I have to give him in, in vague terms. But he always wanted to, me to be a lawyer. So I was like, Dad, I'm playing a lawyer. And that's all he needed to know. And he was like, this is my favorite I play project one, you I play one on television on and sometimes video games. Yeah, yeah it works. That's it. Greg, and people ask us this all the time, but I'm going to ask you, to put you on the spot, Greg, what's your favorite line from Yagami? Oh, do you remember? A, do you remember a single line? I do. I do. I, do. I, I know the favorite. Line. I know the best yeah. one. Yeah, this is okay. I can't say it though. I yeah, mean, mine I, are usually either spoilers or profane. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> you can say it. I right? can say it. Right? There's it a play doesn't, it doesn't really spoil it. If it doesn't, someone did say like they haven't played the game yet, so don't don't spoil too much. But if it's not a spoiler, then then go for it. Uh, you know what? The game's out there. People are playing. My favorite line is now. Let's go get that lady's cat. Okay, that's that not absolutely the best line. I haven't played it yet, and that has no context. It yeah, has no context, so no context. it's not like, and as I die, <laughs> you know, yeah. like that's true. Now that I've been shot in the chest by my best friend, oh, you know, well, like, thanks. well, yeah, there it goes. Yeah, there it is. That's not a spoiler. As I, yes. I haven't the played the true game, villain, though. and it's Mapu. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Greg, in light of one of the funniest voice lines in Judgment, why are you bad? Why am I a bad voice actor? No, I don't think I that's don't what it is. That's, that's not. That's what usually it's just sort of that's what directors say. But I'm just like, why did you? Is there that someone gets you that argument? And then, then I usually am escorted from the facility. But that's yeah, dude. That's just, just another day out. Yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just, it's just, just a Tuesday. Uh, what, what were our favorite games to record for? I guess over our career. Share oh, me. What was your favorite? This game was super fun to work on. But to be honest, I have, and everyone's like, that's such a boring answer. I've never had a, an unpleasant time working on a project because I know what it's like to not get the job. So anytime you get the job and you get to go to work, it's like, this is the fun stuff and you get to be involved in a project. So there's never been a project where I'm like, oh, so glad that's over. Never want to do that again. Okay. I feel like if I get to that point, I should probably do something else. That's again. super gracious. Right. You check that box. All the producers are happy. What's your favorite video game? Really? <laughs> I, can't, I can't pick a favorite. That's, is it? I really can't. What was the most challenging? Uh, well, the most challenging was um, doing a motion capture game three weeks after I fractured my ankle oh. and trying to heal my ankle oh. and not get fired, which I did not get fired, and then uh, barely got out of my cast in time to go do the game. So that was the most challenging. So it was like, don't act like this hurts. It hurts a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Greg, what was your favorite? Uh, well, sorry if it's boring, but hands down, it's this, and it will always be my favorite. I honestly don't even think, I, I don't. I was joking with people, thinking like I'm gonna retire now because it's sort of like one of those things where this is this is it for me. You know, I feel like this is the role that people are gonna remember me for, and I just can't imagine having a better experience. So, I to be truthful, I am gonna start focusing on other facets of, of my career, but uh, you know, it's it's. Hands down, this 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 project. That's cool. That's well, it was interesting cool. because like when we first started talking about the project a few months before it kicked in, it was it was sort of like looking at the character and and we knew kind of going in that what this was. It was a special game going in. It was, you were such a perfect fit for for Yagi. I mean, we knew that, and we honestly didn't go out to, to anybody other than you because it was such a natural thing for you. And so I think that um, when you walked in, you just kind of owned the the part. 
And what was amazing is, you know, we, the way we do a lot of these scenes is very technical, right? Because we have Japanese reference, but you're you're adding your own thing to it. And one of the things we really did in, in, in Judge was was sort of respect the Japanese, but then take our own take on it, right? We would listen to it and, and bring that in. So you brought so much to that of you that when I watch the game, and I love the Japanese performances, I love what they did, but I cannot hear the game any other way than you doing it, if yeah. that makes sense. That's, totally. not, that's not kissing perfect. your butt. That's just, that's yeah. just, seriously, I, I really feel that you and that character are so bonded that it was just, I, I couldn't imagine anyone else doing that role. And you, yeah. kick, you kick people in the face to solve problems, like on a daily basis. Yes. So that was... Yeah, and, and then I exclaimed, kick faces! Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would say probably one of my favorite roles was uh, I got to play Cesar in Just Cause 4, which was cool because it was like a full motion capture thing and Cesar is a extremely paranoid alien conspiracy theory guy, so he's the comic relief of the game. And he's just, uh, and he, I spoke in like a high pitched Spanish accent the entire time. <laughs> and, uh, and it's just like, I, I, I ruined, Orion Acaba was the lead, and my goal was to ruin as many faces as I could. Make him laugh. Yeah, just all I did, like all I had to do was look at him, and he'd be like, <laughs> so yeah, I think that was my favorite. That's awesome. Keith, have you acted in any games? Have you been in any games that you've directed? So, yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't usually take credit for it. Okay. Uh, I've, been in a, I've, I've been in about 60 games, nice. but I've directed and produced 650 games. Wow. So, it's probably more than that now because there's like about 50 of them that have never seen the light of day. Mm. Uh, we wow. used to, yeah, I mean, you have some games where you're working on it for two to three years and then they just cancel it and it's just Oh my heartbreaking. gosh, that's terrible. But yeah, it's, <laughs> and it's, it's wild because you're really married to a project and you're on it and you've done voiceover files. We've done stuff for Ghost Recon and stuff for uh, StarCraft Ghost and other things that have been shut down. We did this one game called Thrill Kill back in the day and it was the first four player oh, the fighter. It was, a, it was a multiplayer game. And it got banned. It got banned, and it was about a week before it was going gold. And the game was finished. And oh uh, our company gosh. was just part of EA, and EA was getting a lot of pressure from the government for violent video games. And so they just literally sacrificed the game. Kind and of. Thrill Kill was just not and the title for the time. No, it was like <laughs> brutal. You had like these guys that would crush people's heads. We actually got we got an adult rating. Uh, part of the band was because of the sound. And I, not only was I doing all the music and all the sound and all the actors and everything else, but but for the sound effects, we took like watermelons and we were destroying watermelons <laughs> and we'd take like celery and, and twisting it for bones. And you'd take like, uh, like uh, I don't know, like peppers and rip them apart for like brains and skulls. Wow. And, and literally the, the ratings board came in and they said, well, you know, the violence of the guy's head getting ripped apart is okay, but can we like lose the sound because it's too graphic? What is it supposed to be like? Yeah! <laughs> and I was like, I took that as a compliment. But uh, yeah, so. That like. Now when I do like a YouTube video of like you teaching me how to do. Oh, you should like, come in and do Foley sessions. Oh, it's the best. That it is so much fun. It is fun. absolutely the best. But uh, but yes, in, in terms of video games, so um, a lot of times when I was directing, like um, like if you, I, I've done like I think six of the Tony Hawk video games, cool. and a lot of times I would do uh, not only the music and the sound effects, but also obviously all the dialogue. And like when I'm directing Tony, my rapport with Tony is kind of fun, and they're like, well, hey, can you just be the director of the game? And so a lot of times. You'll see in like Saints Row and then Tony Hawk cool. and other things. I'm literally the director, the Hollywood director, oh. and it, even though I've directed all these other things as a you know talent director or performance director, that's so it's, fun. It's, so it's kind of fun. So Everyone you'll see is me, googling this right you'll now. You'll see yeah. me. Yeah. Yes, it's it's embarrassing. So, <laughs> so there's another Sorry. question I hear for for Keith that I think is interesting. So I'll ask it. Uh, it was um, what what challenges or pressures did you face because of the English dub? Like what pressure do you feel to make this English dub? successful especially considering that like past yakuza dubs were never successful or never ne yeah they wouldn't even do it i mean yeah i don't think it's since 2003, 2003 2000 2004, something yeah. whatever it was it right. didn't go over well right and like it right. just they never did it and so so what was that like so it was really interesting for for judge when well, i called judge because it was judge eyes and they didn't have a name for it we didn't know what it was going to be called but we still refer to it as judge um so what's interesting was that this there was this history behind it and it was an amazing series and it's only been subtitled and it's always been in Japanese and the performances are great. And I think there was some hesitation mm -hmm. to do it into English. And uh, there was a game that I directed a few years ago called Sleeping Dogs. And it had been True Crime Hong Kong and it was at Activision and then it turned over and we and the team, we ended up uh, Square Enix. 
And um, the way we did the performances were really special. We got the actors together, got some amazing actors together, and did it as a cast. And and we have this vocab method that we created here where actors were acting together, and it was very realistic and did an amazing job with the actors. I thought they did a fantastic job. So I think the team heard that, and they had talked internally and said, well, if we had the ability to do it, something that sounded like Sleeping Dogs, that we'd like to have that for this. That's the only way we'd consider it. And so Scott and those guys were like, well, we know Keith, and he's working on Persona and all the other stuff here with, with Atlas and Sega and some other things. Sure. And so they, they showed me the project, and I instantly fell in love with it. I was like, wow, look at this animation. Look at, look at what they're doing about the, the realism of the faces and oh the, portraying gosh, yeah. everybody. And, and I was like, wow, it's like a dark crime drama. This really reminds me of Sleeping Dogs. And they're like, yeah, that's, that's what we want. And I was like, well, we did this a very special way. And, uh, and, and Scott was like, let's do it. And so I think that was the, the origins of how we were approaching this, this project. And we wanted something that was really gritty, very real, um, and very respectful for the, the Japanese versions. Um, but you have a lot of limitations when you're doing games because sometimes you have things that were animated in another language, in this case in Japanese, so you're restricted by the mouth movements, by the length of time that they allocated for the animation. And so if you were to replace an actor, let's say you had Christopher Walken, <clears throat> and Christopher Walken was gonna replace William Shatner, yeah. Those guys have totally different acting styles and cadences and pacing. And so to have one actor replacing another actor in another language with fixed animation <laughs> is like taking an actor and just saying, okay, well, you have this box and you are you have to act inside of that. Yeah. There's, there's, there's still pastries there. There, there is. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, well, sorry about that. I was just waiting there. for you to... <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> so that's what, that's what it is. You're stuck in this box. And so the idea for performers is that you don't want to think there is a box, right? You just have to think outside. And when you're in a studio like this, and unfortunately you guys can't see the other way around. Um, I can give him a pan later. There you go. Um, it's epic. It's, it's, it's challenging. There's, there's, there's nothing sensitive, right? I can I give no, him a no, pan. You can turn around. Here's where we record a judgment, guys. Bum, 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 bum. Right inside that big giant ball. You see that ball right there? <laughs> All of us went right inside it. It's, you just put your head right in. No, that's not true. There's the booth back there. Here's the control room. How smooth am I? I'm, am I a gimbal? You are, you really am I a gimbal? Really yeah, that's awesome. This is where it all happened. PCB. It's epic Yay. in here. PCB is one of my favorite places to work at. Agreed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now did I f up the framing? No, I didn't. Look at that. So right. anyway, so that's so that that's the challenge, and I think that's the biggest thing is is that when you have actors that can then embrace that and work in a space like this and know that you know you were in this box. And you have to kind of make that bigger than that. And so I think I think we did. It. We were very respectful of the Japanese. I think we did a really uh, um, a great job of sort of bringing that to the American audience. And and I think what uh, Scott and Dan and, and the whole team at, at Sega uh, US brought to it was this understanding that we're localizing the game. Yeah. You know, we, we weren't trying to do a Japanese game, and it's no disrespect. It's it's just that we we're trying to do something for an American audience. So we're not rolling R's, we're not trying to do it, so it, we're trying to imitate Japanese actors. It's like, this is a great story with great characters yes. localized for this audience. And I think that's what, what made it so grounded. Um, and obviously the game has some fantastic <clears throat> elements that are, that are lighter than that, but, um, but this cast, I think we really elevated that. And, and yeah, that's my, that's my favorite, since I started in film, getting to do voiceover video game or animation or whatever where it feels very grounded and it feels very real and like you said when the, when the images that we're working with look like a movie and feel mm -hmm. like a movie right. then that then the performance has to match that but i don't think a lot of people know that specifically at the studio you guys are always trying to find ways to uh make the quality be it a, a dub or just the original language that the game is produced in Finding things to be, um, finding ways to make the, the production of video games or animation easier, faster, uh, or just better quality. I mean, I've done things with you, like while people are doing the voice down the down the hall, we're doing the facial capture, which right. I loved <clears throat> doing. Yeah, and I've never done that anywhere else. And you guys are always coming up with cutting edge ways to to produce games, which is amazing. I think what's tough about games is that. People see the way movies are done, and they think video games maybe are the same way. They see actors now, and they say, well, they can do their face and their voice and their body. They should just act. 
And and the truth is, in video games, we Frankenstein everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, the, the face might be one person, the voice might be another person, and the body might be someone else. Even the stunts might be something else yeah. there. And we have to put those together in these performances. And you'll, I mean, you'll see it in a game like this in a very beautiful way. And the fact that we can come in and replace a voice um, in English is a real testament to how strong the game development is, right? Because we can adapt that for ours, but not disrupt the rest of the animation, the rest of the story, and still tell a very personal story in the midst of all this technology. So the performers, I think if the performers don't feel comfortable um, and they feel like, oh, just because the technology puts us in the box, we have to do it some certain ways. And that's why I think you see uh, historically dubs and other things are very stale or static, or you get very stereotypical reads, or you get things that are over the top or very animated. Um, and I think that's one of the hardest parts in games is to make things real. And one of the things when I started like on the Call of Duty series, you know, you got screaming, you have soldiers, you have all these different types of, of performances. And and the moment you start giving swagger and making these guys exaggerated, it it gets cartoony. Yeah. So to flatten people out and make them real, in a case like you know, battle chatter and here like a crime drama, it's it's the opposite of what actors are taught to do. Actors are taught to bring life to a line, to take a line and add something to it so it's interesting to listen to, which is which is true. However, when you're doing something that's real, most people, when you're actually listening to pilots or you're listening to soldiers mm -hmm. on the battlefield or you're listening to detectives or real life, you know, dramas, it's very flat. It's very just matter of fact business. Yes. And their the energy's going elsewhere. Exactly. That's what I always tell people, like, whenever I, I'm prior military, that's the, all the story I'll give you right now. But like, so when people like, we're like, I want you to do this like a pilot. I was like, do you want me to do this like a real pilot? Because I don't think you do. Like, where do you want me to yeah. act like a real radio operator, like a real infantryman? Or do you want me to do this like a Hollywood? Roger, so, like, two are yeah, you coming yeah. in for a thing? You're like, no. Yeah, they real, pilots, they real pilots are like, blah, 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 blah. Like, Splash two MiGs, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. That's, that's the way. Yeah. So, so and, and that's why I love this cast so much is that, that cast embrace that. And you kind of, as an actor, Obviously, it's a great opportunity to be able to work in something, and, and, and it's very easy to kind of get lost in that. And I think to put that aside, your ego aside, or anything aside, and say, like, I need to do what's best for the characters here and bring that. And that's what this cast brought in spades. It's amazing. Sweet. All right. So, yeah, we all had an awesome time on the game. Yeah. Okay. And you guys I don't know about you guys, but I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, if you have any other questions that we didn't answer, head over to the subreddit, which is r slash Yakuza Games, and that's what this whole thing is about. So for the next like hour and a half or so, we'll probably be hanging out, answer your questions on the forum. Um, any any parting shots? You uh, want to tell anybody anything about yourself, or like you want to plug anything that you're doing? No, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in, for being here, for yeah. caring. It's it's so great to have. I have loved the fan reaction. To, I was I was nervous, just like Whoa. just for anything. Like, I yeah, it's, I'm nervous. I was, anytime I was nervous. anything comes up. Uh, well, do you remember I, the yeah. announcement? Like the announcement came out. I was like, hey guys, it'll be dual language. It's gonna be yeah. Japanese. And we're like we're like, yeah, it's gonna be Japanese. It's great. It's awesome. But it was like you know we were there's a lot of like stress. To, yeah. Like, uh, are we gonna live up to the they, expectation? They did all those interviews and behind the scenes content that they released. They never do that for games, which mm -hmm. was an honor that they did it for this one. But there's also an elevated amount of pressure. Like yeah. Oh. Okay. Better be good. Hope you guys like <laughs> it. Oh boy. <laughs> Here's more of myself on the line. Yeah. Well, cool. So thanks for watching. All right. Thank yeah. You guys. Thanks, guys, Bye. for joining us, and we'll see you on the Reddit forum. Bye. Bye.